Jesus. How's everyone doing? Good break. Excited? Excited? Of course you can Let's start with the here, question. Yeah. If we can. But, uh, one for Saturday, one for today. <laughs> one for Saturday, last yeah. Saturday. Last Saturday, yeah. one yeah, yeah. for today. The first one, because as well I missed the bit of uh, the beginning of the talk today. I wanted to know what exactly is coming to Melbourne, to Victoria, to the world with the earth changes, if you can uh, speak about it. Because, <laughs> yeah, I've kind of yeah, heard a lot of things, a lot of theories, how bad it's going to be. And I personally, for some reason, don't feel any panic or fear. And I kind of yeah, always thought deep inside that I will feel if anything was to go wrong, but maybe I'm not connected enough or whatever. So. Yeah, well, there, there is this thing, you see, that we often use as an analogy. I don't know if I can draw it very well, but it sort of looks something like this. <laughs> Even oh. I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> it's like Mr. Squiggle. <laughs> uh, I can't draw it all. <laughs> Upside down, upside down. <laughs> it might look more uh, representative of what I'm trying to draw. Um, I'm just trying to picture... Um, For once, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Letters, sounds like... Oh, it's an ostrich. <laughs> she must be my soulmate, I'm sure. Now, what's he doing? <laughs> He's burying his head in the sand. Ah. You see, um, one thing we do um, is that um, we sort of have this funny thing as a human race, and that is that we expect things to continue going on as they are, even when all the signs are pointing in a completely different direction. Have you noticed that? So, to give you an example, the US economy at the moment is going downhill, isn't it? Everyone pretty much knows that, right? It's got full of debt. In fact, their national debt is getting quite high now. Our Australian dollar is, what, $1.8, $1.7, $1.8, whatever it is, US today, right? Now, now, you know, just a few years ago, it was like 50 cents almost, like, um, completely different, right? And obviously, things are going downhill for the US economy. But does everybody say, things are getting, something's going to happen here? No, everyone's... I was reading in the paper the other day in The Australian. I am, one of the econo economists said, I am very optimistic for our economy. <laughs> and I just feel like, yeah, that's another ostrich burying his head in the <laughs> sand. And with regard to earth, earth change events, for example, we've had recently, over the past year, a series of uh, earthquake activity, volcanic events all around the Pacific Plate, have we not? There's just one after the other. There's a whole series of volcanoes that are going off that haven't been going off for hundreds of years, some of them thousands of years at this point, and all of them starting to go off, like over uh, around the whole Pacific Rim of Fire. And yet we read uh, one of the geologists saying, this is nothing unusual. Now, do you feel it's nothing unusual? <laughs> I don't feel it's nothing unusual. So, so what we have a tendency of doing is we have a tendency to receive all this information, but because we're so dearly attached to our own life and our own lifestyle, and we're in particular, we rem remember we listed the fears, which were the fears about family and the fears about what our family think of us and all of those other fears too, they all kick in. And before we know it, what we're really doing is that we are just being, we're not being realistic or logical. We are now not even being what I would call optimistic. We're actually just burying our head in the sand to the truth, which is actually dis d denying. We're basically beginning to live in denial. And, and the problem is on the planet today, more and more people are choosing to live in denial of the things that are becoming painfully obvious. We have had a series of events occur in the Middle East, have we not? Like, a lot of series of events occurring. Sorry, AJ, I wanted to clarify. I had uh, no doubt about the 
end of the world, so to speak, and economical crisis and financial crisis. Yep. For me, it was about 2009 to 10 when I first uh, properly got uh, enough info about mind predictions. I agree. But I'm not I criticizing just, you here. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just, just saying. I'm just saying. I just didn't realize that it's gonna happen uh, to Victoria. For some reason, I feel ah. safe in Victoria and Melbourne. I like, but, but you uh, see, this is this clarify. is what I'm getting at. Everybody feels their own life is going to be safe somehow. Well, can I give the example of the... Yeah. Um, you know, I mentioned on Saturday I started to lead the mediumship team for God's Way of Love. And um, our second week we met, or maybe it's the first week, we set some homework. And the homework was for everyone to channel about the subject of earth changes. Because for myself, that's very scary to channel about something and I might get it wrong or whatever. Well, no, what are the real fears for yourself? Oh, yep. <laughs> I might get it wrong and then my dad would be in a rage with me forever and say that I ruined people's lives. So that's my very specific fear. Not to do with tidal waves at all. My dad's <laughs> anger is much more than tidal waves. <laughs> anyway, um, so everyone, there's about 40 people in the group and about half of them did their homework and they sent me some of their homework. And so if I amalgamated all of the channeling, and it wasn't an exercise in doing accurate channeling, it was an exercise in channeling something we're afraid of. So we weren't too worried. But just to, to highlight the point AJ's making, if I conglomerated all of the mediumship together, then everywhere on this planet is in deep, deep trouble. <laughs> There's volcanoes, earthquakes, tidal waves everywhere, everywhere except... Wilkesdale, Queensland, which happens to be where we live. <laughs> like that, everyone said it's fine. So, you know, you can see that there's a people have a certain they bring into their life and into their mediumship a certain set of um, fears that prevent them hearing about or feeling about certain things. Mm. Yeah. So, so the reason why I raise that with you is that every single person has a tendency to bury their head in the sand about their own personal experience. We sort of expect bad things to happen, but we expect them to happen to somebody else. That's how we are. And because of that, we have a tendency to deny the signs that we're given through the external environment and through a series of events. We, have, we deny the signs that are given that actually it may be far worse than what we actually anticipate with when it comes to earth changes, for example. And so um, what, we're, my, what myself and Mary are doing, to give you a bit of a background, is we're talking to a group of spirits who we feel that uh, we've established some trust of, and, and those spirits are giving us detailed information about what is happening in most areas of the earth. And we're going through country by country with, uh, uh, with getting an explanation of things that are happening in, in each country. Now, as Mary's indicated, this is not through Mary's channeling because Mary is afraid of her dad. So it has to be I through talking to, to others. Um, I'm, uh, for the record, I'm not even convinced it's going to happen. Me, myself. <laughs> because I'm so petrified that if I believe, you know, if you even say it's going to happen, I'm going to be in big trouble. So... Mm. That's the level of my block. <laughs> Whereas I, I'm... I'm <laughs> it's very convinced. Very and convinced. As yep. are most people on the planet, if you think about it, if you talk to farmers in Wondai where we live, they're like, yeah, no, it's going to happen. We've known about the changes. changes coming. We know they're going to come very shortly. These are guys that are just like farmers. Like They're not in on a spiritual not path. Not on any spiritual there. path. Well, yeah. our next door neighbour, I went across the road to meet him and talk with him and... And he said, oh, yeah, I came up here because I just felt moved to come up here because I know there's going to be some things happening to the earth and we feel that this might be a safe place. <laughs> and then uh, I was talking to a worker on our property who we pay to come to do some work. And he said, yeah, my wife, uh, now that you mention it, my wife's ever since she's been five years of old, has had these visions of earth changes happening in 2012. Right? And nobody's told her about 2012. She hasn't read anything she's about it. She's never seen the movie. She's never not, seen the movie, nothing. nothing like that. And she said, and she keeps making me move inland all the time, he says. And so <laughs> she said, where we're at now, she's used happy. To, used yep. to be at the Gold Coast. Then he used to be about 100 k's in there. Now they're about 250 k's inland from the Gold Coast. Like she's, and she feels now, yep. Yeah, now we're going to be safe. <laughs> so she, she stopped him moving after that. So, so there's been plenty of 
people who nothing to do with people on the divine love path or nothing to do with mediumship even really that have had these feelings many of you have had dreams have you not actually of waves and all sorts of different things in your life many of you will probably have experienced that so what we're trying to do is we're trying to talk about the details with the group of spirits who we've established some trust on which myself and Mary will probably release a lot more detail about in a few months' time, probably three or four months' time. Um, and that will give everyone a lot more details of what those spirits are saying. And that is largely because we want to be sure that we're not misleading anyone. Like we're, we're putting um, some faith in these spirits that we're speaking to and we don't want to rush forward and just publicise something. We realise that people possibly listen to us a little bit more than they might listen to someone else and we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing by everyone. But that being said, we also don't want to say nothing because if we say nothing um, and you have the opportunity to make choices and decisions um, and we withhold different things from you because of things that we know, then we feel that wouldn't be very loving either. So, so what we're doing is we're trying to check all of the facts and this is taking a bit of time because it means us travelling to different places to talk with the people involved. And we also have, and as you know, I've had for most of my life a lot of very strong indications of what I feel will happen and, and now those feelings are solidifying as well in terms of the sequence of events and so forth. And so we're hoping to actually, um, to actually give to you a series of events that will occur. Um, Just both um, to do with the economy and pol politics, but also to do with earth change events in order to give you some degree of confidence as to what will happen. Now, we're not going to talk about those publicly until such a time as we feel a lot more certain about the series of events in each location. Does that sure, make sense? Sure, sure, yeah. can, can I just make one more comment about that? What we talked about before about making loving choices versus fearful ones. Oh, gosh, that's a bit bad, this pen here. Um, still applies. Even if we tell you <laughs> blow by blow what's going to happen, if you live in a state of fear about it or you act only because you're afraid of what we're saying... Your law of attraction is in play, if, if you like. It's always in play, but f fearful decision-making leads to laws of attraction that expose the things we're afraid of. Um, I feel that if you're in your desire, God has created a universe that if you're in loving desire, you are more connected with everything around you. The plant life, the environment, God and the spirit world in a positive sense. Mm. So I feel that if you're in a loving, desirous state, um, you're going to feel what's right for you. Um, so I don't mean that to be a brush-off statement. But I re that being believe said, it passionately. We'd, like I personally, you know, Mary's stated her personal position, but my personal position is I feel I know quite strongly what's going to happen here in Melbourne. And, um, but the question that I would ask you is... Are you all following your exact passions and desires right now? Are you doing exactly what you want to be doing, what you would no. be enjoying doing for yourself? Now, my suggestion is if you engage that, that will lead you to a place that is actually going to be a far better place and more than likely be a place that survives earth changes than if you deny your passions and desires... This is what I was trying to say. He says it so much better. <laughs> and, and you suppress them in such a manner that you just want to live your current life because of your fears. And, and so if, if you continue to suppress your passions and desires, how do you think God and your spirit friends who want your life to be saved coming events... Not, they don't want your life saved because of, uh, they're afraid of you dying because they're not afraid of you dying. They would like your life saved because of what you know about the truth already and how you can help people in the future after these events occur and in terms of positive change on the earth. They have a lot of other much larger goals than just saving your life, right? But how can those spirits help you get to the place where you know, you're going to have a life that is, is saved on the planet when you are in so much denial of yourself in terms of desire and so much denial of truth in terms of your relationships with others, how are they going to now inspire you 
to there's, be in the right location at the right time. There's no opening to That's connection. That's exactly what I needed to hear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so my feelings at the moment are it's imperative for any person who really wants to have a happy life from now onwards to begin to passionately follow their own desires and to deal with any fears that they have that are withholding them from doing so. And I can guarantee you, if you go, right, that's it, what's my desire, I'm passionately going for it, it'll trigger your fears, because otherwise you'd already be doing it. And so the best way to do it is to step into it and go, okay, I'm really afraid now. I'll feel that for a while before I take the next step, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you focus on making the decisions for, from now on only about your soul, only about what your soul needs to grow and, and expand, with, in particular grow and expand with love, then what you will find happening is different events will connect you up to all sorts of different people than you, that you haven't even met yet, that you're yet to even meet right now, and, but within a short time can become your best of friends. And, and they will connect you up in such a way that eventually you will actually connect with them and, and probably want to spend more time with them. You may want to move home. You may want to get rid of what you've got here and move somewhere else. All sorts of things may happen. But if you're attached to your current life and you don't follow your passions and desires or you think that you can follow your passions and desires at the same time as deny your injured self and at the same time you know, keep an image of your facade self up and you think you can do all of those three things at once, then you are going to really struggle come the next period of time from now, from now through to the to end of 2012. And I feel passionately that if everyone in this room just did that, just went, okay, what do I passionately desire? I'm going for it. I'm going to live in my soul from now on. I'm going to feel whatever comes up. I'm just going to go for what I desire. You can forget about earth changes. Just forget about it. You're going to survive them because you're going to be in a really active connection with God through that process. If you involve God in that, that's it. You're, you're, and you're also joyous and passionate. You're not out there building a bunker, putting rice and lentils in it, going, no, yeah. no, 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 Putting your today? shotgun in there yeah. with a heap of ammo. You know, <laughs> ugh, yuck. Wouldn't you prefer to just go, hey, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? I'm going to do that thing. And it scares the hell out of me, but it's more important to me to live in joy and just go for it. And I, I just feel absolutely, completely convinced that you will be fine through Earth Changes. And through that Thanks. period, what will happen is that information will come to you that would not have come to you if you weren't following your desires and passions. And you'll know, like, it won't just be a here thing. It, you'll know what's right for you and where to go, yeah. yeah. Thanks. All right. Uh, the Se second second question. <laughs> <laughs> the second one is uh, regarding, uh, if you can give a... Uh, List. You know how you were talking about, for example, on the different spheres of existence, mm -hmm. like you learn to always speak truth, you learn mm -hmm. to do certain <laughs> things, like and you were talking about morals, you know, um, God's truth, I've got here, mm -hmm. like a checkpoint, so mm -hmm. to speak. You know? Little you sign you post that you're progressing. Post. Yes, yes, yes. Can you? Okay. I like, the, I like the idea of the checkpoint. I'm moving to the... I've been to lots Just of checkpoints so, yeah, yeah. in my so life and the, the guy with the flipboard is like they're going, are you in truth all the time? <laughs> Tick. <laughs> How loving is your soul? Tick. Okay. So you go. <laughs> Let's do it only for the first three spheres. Mm, why is that, babe? <laughs> Two is like a good place for me. It's a happy place. <laughs> the reason why I'm saying that is because, um, well, to be frank, none of you are yet in the third sphere. <laughs> so the second reason why I'm saying it is because um, the, the issues with regard to progression, um, if, you can, if you can, over the coming months, arrive in the third sphere, your life after that point is going to be amazingly different from that point on than it has been up until now. Do, do you follow me? And I'll explain why. The first fear transition into the second sphere is actually the release of fear. 
In other, when I say the release of fear, I don't mean all of your fears are released. What I mean is that fear no longer dominates your decision making. So can we call it humility to fear, babe? I'm willing to be humble to fear and feel can it. Yeah. 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 So, but, it, but it's really about the dominance of fear. Right? So fear no longer dominates your decisions in your life. It no longer dominates your life. Now, can you see already, you can see that many of us have yet to make that transition where fear still does dominate a lot of our life. Now, once we get to the point where fear does not dominate, from that moment on, we are, we are going to progress even when we're afraid. Does everyone get that? Whereas up until that point, as soon as we hit fear, we get into a stagnant condition. So it might be fear of family, fear of friends, fear of other people's opinion, fear of authority, fear of how we'll look on telly, fear of anything. Right? And every one of those fears, if we don't get through this barrier where, where fear is the dominating factor in our life, then what happens is we can't make the transition which is the actual next transition, really. Does that make sense? Yeah. This transition, the primary part point of this transition is the dominance of truth. In other words, by the time we get into the third sphere, n now fear no, dom no longer dominates my life and... Truth does dominate my life. In other words, I want to know the truth about everything. Mostly about myself. Right? Mostly about my real condition. So remember the other, the other day we drew the facade self, the three selves, the facade self, the injured self, and the real self that God created, right? Now, in this place, we no longer want the facade self. We want to give up the facade self completely. We no longer, we, we feel repelled even when we look at the facade self. When we try it on again and we go, ooh, I don't want to be That's that. That's how strongly person. we feel about it. Because we want to either be what, it, what our injuries truthfully are, which is our injured self, and on top of that, we also want to engage our desires and passions, right? So, so these, are, these are major shifts that we need to make. And can I... You, you, Keep yep. It. yep. So for me, this truth, um, it's a desire for truth, the truth of me and who I am, and it's a loyalty to that truth. So it's not just talking to Igor and telling him the truth all the time. It's being emotionally in the truth of how I feel all of the time. So that's not generating the facade when we're having the conversation. Or in my relationship with God, I am sharing who I am and what I feel all of the time. So I feel really afraid. I'm just really afraid. And I'm not trying to be courageous through that anymore. I'm just soft to that. I'm soft to every emotion that comes up. I'm allowing the truth of who I am all of the time. Now, these progress points are progress points if you are on the divine love path. In other words, if you're following the narrow way that leads to life, not the broad way that people, most people follow. You can make transitions here on the natural love path, but they won't be transitions into the same states. When I say that, what a lot of people on the natural love path to make, do to make this transition is they get to ignore their fears so much that they now believe they have no fear. But when you start talking to them, the fears become quite evident. So what they've learnt to do is ignore their fears completely. They still live a desirous life and ignore their fears rather than feeling them. Does that make sense to everyone? So what I'm saying here is when you're on the divine love path, you don't just ignore your fears and make out they're not there. You feel them all completely and they no longer dominate your decision making. There's a big difference, isn't there, between those two points, really. So it's very, very important to understand we're not going through this process of ignoring fear or making out we ha don't have any anymore. What we're doing is we're feeling our fears. We still feel them. We still completely engage them when they come. 
but we don't let them dominate the decisions about our desires in our life. We don't let them influence our desires. They don't control my life anymore. You follow me? And on this side here, this is a, they say this is about intellectually accepting truth. So on the natural love path, a lot of people will intellectually accept the truth. So somebody comes along and says, oh, you've got that emotion. Yes, I can see I do. I'll release that to God and it should be gone by then. Or some other term they might use, some other natural love technique. You might do some tapping here and there and accept that intellectual truth and so forth. Release the belief system. Release yeah. the belief system or so forth. But in the end, if it's not done emotionally, you are not on the divine love path. And what I'm saying to you is when you make this switch and this switch from an emotional perspective, from that moment on, both of these switches once they're made, from that moment on, no one will ever affect your relationship with God again. No one will ever be out of control your relationship with God again. No one will even control your relationship with yourself again. Right? So even though you've still got emotional injuries to work your way through and you've still got different desires and passions, some of which are out of harmony with love and some of which are in harmony with love, from that moment on, from the moment of this transition into the, sec into the third sphere or dimension, from that moment you make that transition, you will no longer be afraid of truth you will always be desirous of it you will want to live in it every day it will become the primary driving factor of your life right. now for many there is still a lot of denial of fear so therefore fear does dominate our life or there's a lot of denial of truth like in the sense of we don't have a strong desire to know everything that's going on inside of us and we don't have a strong desire to live in it and stay loyal to it. We compromise the truth. If you compromise the truth, you have yet to make the transition. Right? And for me, it feels like traversing these two spheres is like walking up the rugged hill in a pair of thongs with a backpack on. It's really hard and it's a hot day and you don't have any water. It's, it can feel really tough. And you know, you know how we... Yeah, that's what I was, we were talking about addictions and anger being the cover for our fear and our causal emotion. This is the work of releasing the addictions, the addictions and letting come go of before anger. The feeling of this fear. That's what covers it. And it's it is tough it's tough it's work. Tough going. Like probably took me two and a half years. <laughs> Six months of very dedicated yeah. Um, and now Usually what we spend in this, in this sphere, we spend most of our time arguing with God. So I don't want to do this, this is all too hard, this is stupid, I don't, want to, I don't want to have to deal with these addictions and you feel a bit of a rage And they're not God, even but, really addictions anyway. Everyone else has got them, why can't I keep them? God should have made a different system. Yep. Right? <laughs> and God doesn't know what she's doing after all, let's face it. <laughs> and so and when we have these fears and then we start justifying our fears in this place too. We do a lot of justification when everybody tells us we've got a fear. Well, what do you expect? Of course I've got that fear. You know, yeah. like, it could if, happen. You know, it has happened, you know, all of those kinds of things. All of those kind of things yep. happen in there. Yeah. Usually what? by the time we hit the second uh, dimension or sphere, we're starting to really engage our desire. Now, on the divine love path, there are two primary desires. What are they? God and who? Ah, self, which is two together, isn't it? Okay, so... so if you've yet, on the, on the divine love path, if you've yet to engage God completely, right, then you might be, and this is what we find a lot of people doing, they're talking about emotions and they're talking about feelings a lot, but we don't feel them or, or see them talking about God very much in their relationship with God. They're not as interested in their relationship with God than they are as interested in their relationship with their family or the relationship with their children or their relationship with their partner or so forth. Well, on the divine love path, it's the narrow way that leads to life and it begins with a passion for God. So if we're not having a passion for God, in other words, remember our other part of our discussion Saturday where we talked about 
getting to know God and how to engage the process of getting to know God. Many have yet to really begin that process in a very positive and logical manner. And, and the truth is, when you're on the divine love path, you're really now engaging your desires in these two positive ways. One is you really want to get to know God. And second is you really want to get to know yourself. Self meaning not just myself, but the other half of myself too. I want to get to know them as well. I want to feel our qualities, feel our nature, and feel what our passions and desires are. You follow? And if you think about it, they're the, they're the two most fulfilling relationships your soul, you're ever going to have. The one with God, you're guaranteed this beautiful love connection. And your soulmate and yourself are the, the expressions that God has created for, the, for your soul and the perfect, created the perfect partner for you in that place. So. Now, can I also point out, though, that there are natural love things that you will also have to learn in this process to make those transitions. So there are areas in the natural love side of things to make the transition that we need to learn. One of them is the issue of mor morality. Now, I don't just mean morality in terms of sexual morality. I mean morality in all of its possible forms, what you would classify as the term of ethics, right? in terms of what is ethical, what is not ethical. Now, yep. on the natural love path, we think of ethics, we think of ethics. We think of ethics. On the divine love path, we have the ethic enter our soul, right? where it transforms our feelings. Now, one ethic that we've been presenting to you is our attitude towards other creations of God. This is a moral issue. So a moral issue is something like, what do I eat, is a moral issue. It's not an issue of taste, actually, from God's perspective. It's an issue of morality. Now, on the natural love path, many people, by the time they enter the second sphere on the natural love path, they become a vegetarian. They don't do it because of necessarily because of moral issues. They do it because they want a better connection with their spirit mates or they want a better connection with all the natural love path they're following, like Buddhism says that you should do it or some of the new age processes say you should do it. It's but better for the energy in your body. It's better for the you energy in your body. Things. You know, They have all these different like, justifications of doing it. On the divine love path, we're only interested in one, and that is... What's loving? Is it loving to continue to eat meat, for example? That is a moral, a yeah. moral issue. And I see people falling down in this area of morality on, on... Well, when they listen to these teachings, they go, well, it's my desire to be with this other person. I'm, so I'm married with this person. I've been married to this person for 20 years. It's not... I haven't really tried to, like, talk about the changes that I'm going through or really tried to enter a space of love with this person, but I'm quite attracted to that other person. And because I should have my desires, God says I should, I can ignore the whole life that I've, uh, and commitment that I've made to this person because it's just a desire and I'm allowed to. Now, do you think that person is operating in the second sphere? <laughs> no. And like the issue uh, Fab raised earlier, I've got a mortgage. Well, but I desire to move somewhere else. So I'll just like... Forget about that. Leave the more used to care, bankruptcy. Yep, bankruptcy. Now, that's not a very morally loving thing to do, is it? Because I'm not taking I have, responsibility... Particularly if I have the means to pay the mortgage. Yeah, yep. yeah, obviously. But I have a responsibility to honour what the choices that I've made in the past. That's actually how I get closer to God, by working through those things emotionally. So a lot of people go, oh, it's all about desire, I can have my desires, and they forget all about this issue of morality. Another area of morality. If you know that somebody has a certain injury, and if you manipulate that injury, you'll be able to get something from them, and then you take the course of action where you do manipulate their injury to get that thing from them, do you think that's a very moral or ethical choice? No. So you wouldn't you, if you loved them. So if I knew Mary had an injury where she was petrified of somebody, you know, let's say she's petrified of Igor, dreadlocks are out, man. Mary's just <laughs> petrified of them, right? So, so if, I then, if I then manipulate Mary's fear, because I know that I can, and call to get her to do something that she wouldn't otherwise do, 
then I, even though she has this fear, I am now out of harmony with a, mor with a moral issue. I'm not treating her ethically. Yeah. Right? I've, I've heard a, a really classic one. Yeah, so I'm in a bit of financial trouble and I called my mum. And in the course of speaking, she did offer me $20,000. And, like, I know it's really my desire and... It's a good law of attraction, and right? I don't isn't like it? my mum very much. I, I completely avoided truth in the conversation with my mum, and I do know she does have this injury about always bailing me out. But I, you know, this is the subtext. But it's a good law of attraction. I've, I'm out of debt now. How is that a moral thing? You just got into debt with your mother, <laughs> which you were already probably in debt with emotionally for many years prior. So I'm definitely ignoring a lot of moral issues. Now, when we deal with these issues emotionally... So, for example, when we deal with the issue of the mortgage emotionally, you will find there will be opportunities come up to resolve the issue like in harmony with love rather than out of harmony with love. Now, a person on the Divine Love Path wants to resolve every issue harmonious with love. That doesn't mean that they will do everything everybody else wants. In fact, it's probably highly unlikely they'll do everything everybody else wants. However, they will want to do it in a loving manner that engages morality, that engages truth, desire, but also doesn't operate out of fear. Right? It might scare them doing it. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to be dominated by that fear, yeah. remember. So can you see the first three dimensions and the different transitions that occur? Now, now of yeah. course, on the earth, the transitions are not quite as... Uh, you could say, Delineated, pointed, yeah. as they are in the spirit world. So in the spirit world, you can't actually enter the sphere above without actually getting into the condition of love that that sphere desires. On Earth, you could actually get, you know, you could progress to the second dimension or the second sphere, but have dealt with emotions that you could have dealt with normally in the fourth dimension. So you can actually deal with emotions way, way up here, down here, right? Which, of course, is going to aid your progression as you, as you progress through the dimensions. But if you remember those primary things, then you have a good idea of where you are, if you're honest with yourself, about, about what's going on in your own life. Now, the key is to not then judge all of that and then go, ah, oh, three years... Three years, <laughs> and I'm still in the first sphere. <laughs> Three years. <coughs> uh? That's what I was going to say before, though, when I was giving my up the hill. Mary analogy. said that to me once, actually. Three <laughs> years, and I'm still in. The she, she came, I think it was two years. Maybe. She came up to the house. It might have been two years, and she <laughs> said, and she says, I, "I'm <laughs> like a crack addict, you know, like that crack <laughs> addict. She, crack addict." You know, it's still, um, still in addiction. In addiction I want, thing. Yeah. yeah. And the key is to be honest with yourself about where you're at. And that's the awakening of your soul that they talk about in the pageant messages. It's vital to actually taking a step up. You have to see the truth of where you're at, like emotionally. Mm. Yeah. But what I was going to say in my going up the hill analogy, yeah, yeah. you just, I, we got cut off and it sounds very bad. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Um, is that it is, it's tough going through these two spheres. But I feel like you get here and there's like this little elevator door and you step in and like you're like whizzing. It feels comparatively to the first and second sphere. And I'm talking about memory now because I'm not in that elevator yet. But um, it's, it, honestly, once you've established these relationships and the desire for truth, it's quick. It's really quick. And it's just that we live in a plane that is really drenched in fear. And it does take work to undo what we've been taught. And it feels tough and it feels long. But you will know when you're starting to take these steps because you feel different. You're not just telling yourself a story anymore and going, well, I'm a bit better on that and I did have a cry on that. You go, no, I can feel there's something different now. There's a surety in me that I'm not going back to that place. I don't want it anymore. And and the more steps you take, it feels like to me, this is like, can I be crude? There's a lot of shit in here. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of shit that we've accumulated and we've got to get rid of and it feels pretty crappy. But to me, it's like the fertiliser of the soil. It's the, it, humility is the, like fertilising the soil for our growth. And it's like when we take that step, the seed germinates and like 
Jack and the Beanstalk, you know, we've got, we've got so many more footholds and it feels easier. And, and I feel that that's really um, so important to remember. <laughs> You're so good in your passion, girl. <laughs> I'm supposed to be giving up swearing Sorry, and I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I've got you all embarrassed now. Yeah, yeah. So where do you think you are, darling? Honestly? Hmm. About it. Yeah. I feel like these things are really becoming very important to me and so is truth. But I know that I'm not 100% of time in truth, like in really scary situations, yeah. I maybe don't... And you're now just starting to embrace your fear in a really Very, positive way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just allowing it a Whereas lot more. Whereas before, living in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does that make mm. sense? Yeah. 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 Does that help? <laughs> yeah. Very <laughs> much. Now, can you see, as we go sort of higher in the dimensions... Um, there's obviously going to be further things to learn, but but can you see it's sort of almost pointless discussing them if we've yet to get beyond these points, you know? And and, and these bits are the basis for every. <laughs> I'm passionate the, about it for yeah. everything on the path, you know. This if we master this, it is so easy and it's beautiful. Like it's you know those piles that we were talking about. There's things that go in that shore pile that are magnificent in my mind. You know, you know it's there and it feels really good. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, here, when we're here in this part of uh, our progression, we're often going, oh, jeez, <laughs> why did anybody tell me about this? Like, I was happier I, before this crap. I was happier before <laughs> this began and now I was happy in my delusion of this <laughs> yeah. uh, in my delusions and denials, and now I know about them. Oh, gee, you know, we, and we go on like that quite a lot. And you We're try and forget. You go, oh, that's it. Oh, yep, forgetting, deleting that stuff about emotions, and then you. Walk and we're often complaining about yep. how hard it is all the time. Yep. You know? Oh, it's so hard. You know, we meet together with other people who are on the path. <laughs> we go, jeez, this is so hard, isn't it? It's terrible. Or, you know? or we have the compulsive <coughs> discussions. So I think I've got this emotion. I've been thinking about it and I've got this emotion with my mum and it's really shit, isn't it? You've got that emotion too, don't you? No, I don't have <laughs> yeah. that emotion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we do have all these discussions, you know, that go on all the time and... And we're talking about our emotions and emotions, but never really feeling most of them, right? That's how it is there, you know. And we, and we, we you know, and then we have a, disc you know, we're almost afraid to see AJ. Like, many of you have this going on all the time. Just, what's he going to say to me next? What's he going to say to me next? That's all, that's all because of our fear, you see. That's the fear of truth. That's the fear of hearing more truth. When we hit this second, second dimension, a lot of that starts alleviating, you know, you start feeling, oh, hang on a sec, I might be afraid still, but fear is not dominating my life and I'm not afraid of the truth so much anymore. I want to hear the truth more, I have a much stronger passion and desire to hear the truth. So, so when, when Mary and I were living together with Mary in this place, it found, I found it really quite difficult because it's like, Almost every word out of my mouth, there is a fear-based response coming from Mary. Justifying my Justifying position, the yeah. fear, justifying why she should be angry or upset with me in that process or whatever. And then as soon as Mary moved into this place, all of a sudden, oh, it's lovely to live <laughs> with Mary, right? Because cause Mary goes from now, so now she's not projecting a fear, projecting a fear, projecting a fear. She still does that sometimes, but, but she's not living in that place anymore. I won't let it dominate my life. Where there's just a barrage, right? And, and now also she activates her desires, her desires for God in particular first. They're the ones to generate first. So if you don't even have a desire for your soulmate, well, don't worry about that. Focus on your desire for your God first, then focus on your desire to get to know yourself, right? And in that process, you know, the soulmate thing will slowly work its way out. By the way, the soulmate stuff often doesn't work its way out Till there, right? The reason why is we have so many intergender emotional injuries. We don't want to engage with the opposite gender, and if our soulmate is of the opposite gender, then we've really got some uh, major work to do. 
And unfortunately for many who have a soulmate of the same gender, we've got so many blockages to our, the same gender as well due to different things growing up that often even by that stage we're yet to resolve some of those emotions. So, so if we can focus on these things first, to be frank, if the earth has really never known very many people in this state, in the third dimension, historically. There's been very few people on the earth ever in that state actually. There's been many gurus who have been overcloaked by spirits in that state and then they look like they're in that state because they've been overcloaked by a spirit who then controls most of their life but the actual the person themselves not not in that state and just that recently uh, Sai Baba Sai Baba passed yes um, I think it was a couple of weeks ago three weeks ago last, last weekend. weekend yep Easter was it no it was Easter weekend it was it was Easter weekend because yep, we, were we, we were in Armadale. Some people who were... And um, they had the service for him since. But um, <laughs> Sai Baba um, is in the first dimension. Oh, he's an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like me. <laughs> when I came along, I was like, whoo, who's that person? He's an he's a Indian guru who had millions of followers. Yep. And... Uh, and yet he was overcloaked by a spirit in a higher dimension, but he was also overcloaked by some very nasty women spirits in, in a lower dimension as well, so, um, who, who have spent a lot of time talking to me about that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's been quite a lot of stuff going but on But the impact here. isn't the same, is it, babe? Even if someone's overcloaked for, with a spirit from a higher dimension, it's not the same as having a soul in that space, in that space on this on plane. Earth. As you, that's logical, isn't it? Like there's a. See, so you imagine you get to this condition where where you now do not have ever fear dominating any of your decision making, and then on top of that, you are always looking for truth. You are always looking for more truth, not just external truth, but you're always desiring, passionately desiring more truth for yourself as well, and you're passionately desiring to live in truth with every single person around you. All the time. There, in other words, you by this stage have a strong desire to completely give up the facade with every single person around you. Now, you imagine the effect that that's going to have on every person around you? Many of them will get angry. And, and you know what happens with us? Most of the time we try to prevent their anger. Why? Many of you got angry when you first this, begun this process. This is what... Um I was saying to a group of people recently um, when we were having the whole interview process and it was all going to go to air, Channel 7, and I, the major block that prevents me, I feel, going into this sphere because I love truth about myself now. I feel gratitude for it and I recognise that it connects me to God and myself so much more. But my major block is the fear of the violence of the world. So I'm afraid to enter this space of truth with everyone because I fear the violence and the anger. Yeah. And um, I had this epiphany in the week preceding the, um, the piece about us going to air on Channel 7 about how much anger I had when I met AJ. How every time, especially if we don't know anything about emotions or any of these processes, when our belief systems are seriously challenged, we get angry. <laughs> and I got angry. I was angry for a long time and I realised, my gosh, I don't want those people to get angry and I know it's going to challenge them. So I'm actually trying to prevent their process, their process of they could even step onto this path or maybe they won't, but they have, they have the free will ability to become angry if they want to and, hey, I did too. So I feel that... Um, oh. Well, if addictions and demands are above our fears, suppressing our fears, and every time our fear is triggered, we get angry, we have to feel that anger before we're going to get to our fear, do we not? So, so if we're trying to stop the anger of other people when we talk truth to them, what are we doing? We're trying to stop them Even working through this... the issue of their fear. Yeah. They're never going to get to their fear if we try to stop them. So that's the thing, and that's what prevents me, the, the fear of that. But imagine the power if I no longer feared that. 
I'd just welcome everyone stepping into their process. And I'd want, I'd be totally loyal to truth because I'd recognise as well, this is an opportunity for them to step onto that process, even if it begins with anger. Yeah, pretty powerful. Sorry? No, oh, we don't no, know. Don't we don't know if Channel 7 is airing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The spirits who were behind it wanting it to air are now behind it wanting to not air. Because <laughs> <laughs> they kind of saw that there could be benefit rather than just... See, the, see the, if it airs, then more people know that Jesus and Mary are on earth and other 14 on the earth and there's all this truth available and our spirit friends who are in the celestial heavens will be able to connect to those people and show them where to go. Whereas if it doesn't air, then none of those processes can ha happen just yet. All right? Because there's, only, there's certain ways that I, certain people can only hear about us based on their connections. So we don't know when it will air or not. We're just going to take the opportunities that are available with everything that comes up anyway emotionally, which is the whole reason why we engage the crew. We spent 50 hours with them. Two days they lived in our house. I don't think they'll report on that. I'll, never, not, I'll not say that, of course. I'll not say how loving we were to them. <laughs> My vegan pizza I made them. <laughs> yeah. Is there any more questions about that? Yeah? Cool. Something else? Something else? Sim similar Something subject, else? yeah. If we, if we have the mic over there, it's coming your way. Yeah, it was just a question regarding emotional release. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if anybody else has felt it in the room, but uh, it's happened to me a couple of times, um, just releasing emotion regarding my father. Mm -hmm. And what I felt is like black s smoke coming, mm -hmm. sort of going past, mm -hmm. the pain in my heart. Mm -hmm. And after that, just like... Uh, Weight lifted off my shoulder. Yep. Are you able to explain that? Or yeah, that no. And a lot of times when we release an emotion that's a causal emotion, there were spirits also attached to us in those particular areas of our body. And when we release the emotion, we now pl plug up the hole where that spirit can no longer connect to us. And you'll actually feel also a lightening of your body because you're no longer carrying around an extra spirit with regard to that particular thing. You see, almost every injury we have has some kind of spirit attachment associ associated with it. And so for many of us, we have five, ten, and in some cases I've had like thousands of spirits attached to me at any one point in time. And once you release the emotion, then the attachment's also released. So you feel brighter, lighter, more joyous, all those kind of things automatically. <laughs> yeah, As well as the emotion being gone, of course, no longer dictating... Your life. Yeah. Thank yep. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Just yep, in, front in front of you, actually. Yeah. Front, thanks. Hi. It's a question about um, responsibility, sort of. Yep. Um, it's a lovely yeah. accent you have. <laughs> yeah. um, I have a, I've just been getting a sense in the last few days that one of my addictions, actually, is being overly responsible. Overly responsible for? Well, just creating things to be responsible for. Right. So, and, and I, I have this feeling now that that's part of, of what prevents me from connecting to my passions and desires because I have this story that's been running for ages now. Um, Is it's it? It's almost like a luxury I can't afford to, to follow my passions because I'm so burdened with responsibility. Sort of. Yeah, I don't actually think the problem is responsibility. It's more that you're keeping yourself busy so that you don't have to actually engage desire. Now, we, we do that a lot because we're afraid of our desires so much. We're afraid where they'll lead us. And so what we do is we create this altar life that we have a lot of responsibilities and that way we can, we can give ourselves excuses as to not engage our passions. D does that make sense? It kind of does, but I feel like I have removed almost everything from my life except the things I absolutely have to do. You know, I don't, I don't feel like I'm overly busy. I've kind of... It's just the stuff I have to do to kind of get by, you know? You sure? Oh, no, oh, if that's what I think. So can you describe your life? Um, I don't work that much. and I work as much as I have to to get by. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a single parent. 
I look after my son, and I spend, when I'm not working, I'm really happy to just get into my emotions kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, what about your desires there? I, I'm finding it really hard to connect to them. I have a real strong desire to move out of Melbourne, mm -hmm. and I know that there are fears that are blocking me from doing that. Yep. You see, the feeling I have with you is what I, what I actually said, that one of, the, one of the things that you could do is, is engage your responsibilities in order to avoid your desires. So, so in other words, you've become afraid of what you actually desire and then as a result of that, you choose to live a life that's out of your desire mm. in, order to, in order to avoid the feeling that uh, if you engage your desires that you'll fail. Do, do you understand? Like, so, um, so a lot of people don't engage desires because they are so afraid that if they fully engage a desire and they really feel good about it and it doesn't work out, they're going to be gutted. Do you, do you follow me? It's, um, I have that feeling like, or I have, it's dominated a lot of my life. If I try really hard and I fail, then I'm a failure. If I don't try very hard and I don't engage my desire very much, then... And it fails, then I can say, oh, but I that was because really, of this or that. Yeah, I didn't really give it much attention, you know. It's, you sort, know, of, it's a yeah. sort of a way of explaining away the deep grief associated with not getting what you want. Yeah, not. that makes sense, actually. Yeah, or well, it's for me, it's like a self-image <laughs> thing. Like, uh, like I'm not good enough. I'm not talented enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not, you know, all these things that would be triggered if I really went for it and it totally failed. <laughs> yeah. For so yourself, for so yourself, I feel it's more what I've mentioned uh, to you. The this feeling that if you engage your desires and they don't come true, that you're just going to be terribly distraught by it, like destroyed almost by it and so that it's better to not engage them and that way you don't have that threat of the loss of them mm -hmm. if that makes sense so babe do you feel um is that because of the hopelessness feeling or yeah it's yeah. like it's there's like, no hope for something good no mm -hmm. it's more um it's sort of like cornelius and what he has with that with his desires you know like the the feeling that you have is very similar to a feeling Cornelius has with his desires and that is he, he's always detuned himself from his desires because if he follows his desires as raw as he feels them and he fails in their attainment he's just going to be internally destroyed by the process and, if, and, and so distraught that, uh, that, that he feels it's actually better to not engage his desire at all. Yeah. 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 And I feel that's a very strong feeling inside of you for some reason. Now, uh, it's related to your mother, actually. Um, so what's going on with mum? My mother was really depressed, re clinically depressed, as long as I right. remember. And she passed away when I was about 25. And um, she was... Like, I, felt, I felt like I was the parent. Like we were the parents, myself mm. and my sisters. She was completely off the planet most of, not most of the time, a lot of the time. Because she was depressed. Yeah. Your mum was suppressing huge amounts of rage <laughs> with her depression, mm. Mm. and uh, and then you, she made you look after her life. Yeah. And and this, for some reason, has caused you to feel quite disconnected from your own desires. Mm. So, is that because you feel that you have to actually? Kind of, I feel do like things I'm for others. Exhausted from being responsible for others. Mm. Uh, it's almost another task to follow my desires. That's, yeah. that's a bit of what it feels like. Do, is there a bit of a feeling too that I can feel from you that you would like somebody else to help you with your desires and like to to um, what's the word? Not so much share in them, but Encourage. almost them. yeah, almost to encourage you and reward you and. Uh, emotionally so that you can feel like so that you don't have to be responsible for your own desires so somebody else can do it for you um because you're so tired of doing it for other people probably yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so i'd suggest to look at those areas because desire is such a, a a massive uh force forward in our life and if we can engage them we can grow grow very very rapidly particularly desire for god but, uh, but, but also you're just your passions in life. Because if, if I didn't follow my passions in my life, 
I would never have met Mary, yeah. ever. If, if I had never even acknowledged my own who I was, I would never have met Mary. The only way I met Mary was because her parents wanted me, ironically back then, her parents wanted me to come to their house to talk to a group of people as Jesus. Yeah. And so I went to their house and talked to a group of people and then they wanted me to come back, so I went back and then they wanted me to come back again. And the fourth time that I came back, or the fifth time I came back, Mary was there. Yeah. All right. And that process would never have occurred if I didn't engage my desire to actually teach the truth that I could feel inside. Does that make sense? So, so without desire, if you don't fully follow your desire, you're never ever going to really fully embrace your connection with God, your connection with yourself, your connection with your soulmate. None of those things can be fully embraced without desire. So, so my suggestion to everyone in the group is anything that suppresses your desire, deal with it as soon as you possibly can. And it's only two things that would suppress your desire, fear and grief. And it's mainly fear. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Can I ask sense? another question? Yeah, fine. This is more practical one. Um, I've asked um, Jane and Anto before, and it's about my son. He, he, he just can't go to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. And what they suggested was that, that he's afraid and that he's got... That he's He's got spirits or whatever, right? How old is he again? He's eight. Eight. Mm. But he, that doesn't, like, he, that he denies that. He doesn't connect to it. He denies that he's eight? <laughs> 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 no, I'm just joking. I know Very what I'm much an eight-year-old. Um, you know, he says he's not afraid. And he, yep. you know, I talk to him about spirits and stuff like that. And sometimes he says, yeah, you know, they're saying this, they're saying that. But he, he doesn't connect with being afraid of going to sleep. And when did this all begin? Um, it's been uh, more intense for the last year, which is about as long as I've known you. Yeah, uh, so it must be my fault. <laughs> so can... Another thing well, you've done. <laughs> yeah, I've been more in my emotions and whatever. I don't know. I can't connect it to anything, but he, it's, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And he's just hours at night, just so switch off. It, so does he want to stay up with you, or is he... Um Lying in bed, just sort of Sometimes not being able really to settle. Sometimes he's really frustrated because he's aware that his body is tired, but he can't switch off. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about um, the truths that you've found in the last year? Honestly. I love them. Mm. I mean, it's triggered my fears, of course. Y yes. You're actually terrified of them. Why would that be? I mean, I'm, I'm terrified of facing some of my fears, but I haven't seen that I'm terrified of the truths. Well, can you see there's a correlation, and this is something to understand for every problem, is there's always a correlation between events and, and subsequent effects of events. So the fact is, your son has had more trouble sleeping in particular since you found the divine truth. So that, the, that's a significance. So the question then to ask yourself is, all right, what, what, what emotion have I had since I've found the divine truth? So what are the emotions you've had since you've found the divine truth? Mostly grief. Grief? I've only recently started to feel some anger. And I don't know. If I, can, I can access grief really easily, but I probably have had more trouble with anger because it was so suppressed. Yeah. Um, what about your future? Are you afraid of it? Um, I'm probably more afraid of things staying the same, to be honest. I okay. just couldn't bear the thought of things staying the same. Yep. And he's afraid he's not going to sleep. So, so what, what do you feel like? I can tell you, but it's better if you <laughs> let yourself work all through this. What do you feel has changed in the last year where well, you are more afraid of something. There's some, there's some things you're more afraid of than you've ever been afraid of before, can I say, that would relate to sleep. Have you any idea what they are? Spirits. Ah, 
Yeah. Why, why are you relate? Why are you afraid? Well, it would only because be you're now discovering yeah. the truth about spirits yeah, yeah. and how much they influence life and so forth. Mm. So what? Uh, and can you see that every time you go to sleep, you've got to go through a group of spirits to go to wherever you go to in the sleep state. Mm -hmm. And then when you come back to your body, you've got to go through that group of spirits again when you come back to your body. And you see that your son's going to have to do the same yeah. through a group of spirits and through, right, in terms of coming back to his body. Mm -hmm. So what are your fears about spirits? I don't consciously have a lot. I've watched a few of the movies, you know, um, with spirits. Yeah. I, w I was more so in the past. I remember when my mother died, visiting, going back home to Ireland, visiting, I was really aware for years that, that she was still in the house and there were heaps of really angry spirits because the house is re it's really, really old. Mm -hmm. And I used to feel it a lot. I feel it a lot more when I'm back there, really negative kind of energy. Mm -hmm. I don't feel it so much here. Not in a, not in really what spirits do you feel are around your son? I don't know. I mean, I could say maybe my mother, but I don't, I don't know, really. My feeling is you need to feel about this issue of spirits more and allow yourself to really feel. Because the feeling I have from you is that you're quite freaked out about spirits. Like, and the amount of influence that they have, that you can actually feel the heaviness of them at times. And you are very concerned for your son's welfare in this process. Like, oh, you're concerned to protect, for protecting him. Like, you're worried about his protection. And, uh, and this worry actually attracts more negative spirits, which, which would actually ramp up his fear about going to sleep at... Um, and, and, and create resistance in him towards going to sleep. Whenever, as a parent, we have a child doing something, it is always related mm -hmm. to something going on for ourselves. So the reason why I'm asking you to... create, And if you can just even sit down with a book, you know, uh, that you can write in, and analyse the last year about... And ask yourself, what are your true feelings? about spirits? What are your true feelings about finding the divine truth? What are your true feelings about desires? Have you been more challenged about desires in last year than you were prior? Like what things have changed? What, what changes have happened inside of you which have ramped up some of your fears? And focus on those fear-based areas in terms of answering this question. And also set your intention with God to actually get some answers on these questions uh, that you have. And I feel that what will happen is those answers will come quite easily for you. Yeah. But, but the areas we've discussed tonight, they're the areas you need to look at primarily. The issue of your own desires and your own fears, and in particular your own fears involving spirits. And involving the transition into the sleep state. What you know, what you're personally worried about. Do you find that you wake up sometimes with a feeling of dread in the morning? So when you wake up in the morning? Not dread, but being drained. Being drained? Yeah. Yep, yep. So I'd have a look at that. Yeah. yeah. Because usually when we have feelings of being drained, what happens is that uh, we are actually being drained. And during that time when we uh, are exiting and entering our body again from sleep, from, from sleep and to sleep, what happens is that we are conscious of who's draining us. We, we actually see the spirits who are attached to our own bodies. Do you, you understand? And, and quite often that's quite a frightening experience. Like, you know, it's something that we'd prior to then not really want to know. And now we know. And if you allow yourself to find out about what spirits are actually attached and how do you personally really feel about that you'll find some pretty unsettled feelings that you have about most of those things. If you let yourself feel them, you'll be able to work through those attachments. Yeah. What's the time? Quarter to ten. Oh.
Oh, okay, we need to probably finish. Yeah, because we've only booked it to half past nine, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, perhaps what, what we'd like to do is uh, next, it won't be this weekend, but the following weekend on the Saturday, where we've booked this again. So if you'd like to join us again on that weekend, and we can still continue to answer some of your questions. By then, um, we will have those packs available for you there's there's the DVDs there's actually 14 DVDs joy where's joy yeah there's 14 DVDs in the pack isn't there and so we'll have those packs ready to give to you so um you, uh, they are free so if any of you come along and come to that we'll be able to give you the pack the pack includes uh the subject of a, of the secrets of the universe and questions and answers about the secret of the universe it also includes longing, uh, the relationship with God, uh, prayer, humility, longing for divine truth and longing for divine love. And faith. And faith. Yep. So those discussions. Are and all they all good. look really excellent. Uh, Igor's remastered them and they've got new artwork on the DVDs and they look really nice. Yeah, yeah. they look really nice. <laughs> Um, pretty soon we'll be able to have some... Uh, we're, we're sorting through some issues of having somebody, uh, while we're away, take orders and send orders out. It's far better, though, if people can um, either view them over the internet on YouTube, because they are all also posted on YouTube, um, or, um, or they can get them at, at the gatherings that we have, because it's a lot cheaper than sending out postage. Um, yeah. yep. So that's uh, for the following week. So uh, do you w what do you want to do then? Do you want to continue asking some questions or would you like to keep doing that? Or? Uh, Did you? Did you? Uh, microphone, thanks. I really love... <laughs> <laughs> if we could have like a manual for how to pray... A manual for how to pray. Well, <laughs> I'll whip that up, Deidre. No, 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 no. I don't, you know, I, f I feel like I'm hearing a lot of, and even in the last Melbourne talk, like there's about 17 things. I'll pray about that, pray about that. But I've got no idea. Like, mm -hmm. I've been doing the best, but I feel like I'm in a maze blindfolded and I've got no manual. And yep. I'm, I would love if we could. Sure. So let's talk about so prayer. So let's talk about prayer and how to, <laughs> yeah. how to pray. That'd be wonderful. I'd also really like to talk about the subject of femininity. <laughs> <laughs> but I noticed that nobody brought it up. Can I feel we have a 10 hour <laughs> session, maybe? Can, can we just say <laughs> that the group here in Melbourne feels very blocked towards femininity? Which is different to feeling a bit triggered when AJ said there's been no divine femininity on this earth because I felt a fair few triggers. Yeah, I'm like, what about Mother Teresa? What about me? <laughs> <laughs> Princess Diana. Mother Teresa was a, a long way away from divine femininity when she was on the earth. Do, when, when we talk she, about... She was not even connected to any of her own sexuality. Yeah. So and how can you be a divine feminine not connected to... A part of the body that God made for you to experience. Oh, he's just all just seemed like a nice female. <laughs> oh. So we need to clarify divine femininity from a nice female. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> also, I, I, I'm sorry, but I don't agree. <laughs> she was a lovely person in terms of giving, um, but I don't feel she was a lovely expression of divine fem uh, of divine femininity. Yeah. Well, and I, I want to talk about this issue because I feel it's a big journey that I'm on to discover femininity. Uh, I don't feel it's reflected around us, no, really. that's fair enough. And if I didn't have boobs, I wouldn't know all the female. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so, and but it's, it's like, it's true. It? Like, I don't even... I could make a lot of jokes about that, but I'll go... I was staying. Um, but I know what you mean, yeah. I agree that for many people, it's just the body differences. Hey, and most women hate their boobs. They don't want to be a female. Or really, more importantly, they know? hate their vaginas, which yeah. is more, yeah. more importantly yeah. a different... They hate yeah. all their female bits and resent them. Yeah. And that's not what we're talking about with divine femininity either, really. No. But, no. but of course, if you're connected to your femininity, you would not hate those things, would no. you? You know, you, you, you would firstly love them because God created them. Yeah. 
Well, I just recently got boobs. Not not because I got a boob job, but because I put on weight. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> I only got boobs when I was like 35. So I'm like, they're cool. And they're still, <laughs> you know, they're still like vertical. They're not racing to my knees yet. So <laughs> I miss that. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so did you read the, we do, we would like to talk about divine femininity because it, we just feel that there is sort of two feelings we get from the group here about the female. One is this sort of female dominance thing that goes like on Like angry feeling? Where the woman is dominating the relationships, where the woman's dominating and controlling what's going on. Or the flip side of this uh, injury is um, this feeling that... Uh, so, so that side, the dominant side, is where women sort of almost have this feeling of, uh, what do you call it, feminist type... Uh, yeah, and um, a feeling that women have been disrespected and we're not going to be any more and don't you know I'm feminine and none of that is feminine, yeah. you know. It's this angry place of proving that women are good. And then we also see a lot of uh, preferential treatment of the feminine, where in particular the, from the males in the group, where you're, you're afraid of the angry women and then preferentially treat the woman over the male. In fact, acknowledge the woman more than you acknowledge the male. You want to look after her more than you want to look after the male. And there's this real um, feeling of like um, that the woman is everything almost type of feeling inside of many of the men present. Mm -hmm. And what that's doing is actually damaging the situation even further. Um, and in a way, they're not uh, interacting with... Uh, in in a masculine way, if you like, to, th to someone in femininity. Like all these controls, addictions, dominance, none of that, it, whatever state we're in, we're not in the pure expression of our gender or our sexuality in that place. And so we, we wanted to talk about femininity, but also... In, in terms of its qualities. Yes, in terms the qualities of, its of it. Personality, that, if you like. Yeah. 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 And, and how... How and also in that process, we may also discuss some things about masculinity and its qualities, yes. and, and relationship between the and two. And the relationship yeah. between the two. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so that would be uh, if we get a chance to do that. No, that, that sounds good too. That sounds good too. <laughs> <laughs> we just noticed too that uh, um, in many of the places we've been visiting, there is this still this separation between the gender. So that's very, very strong still, um, you know, where, where there's not this sort of feeling of uh, togetherness and cooperation and, and, I, and not, in a, not in an intellectual manner, but in a feeling, feeling a feeling of togetherness. And, uh, and that's something we wanted to talk about at some point. Mm. Mm. And I'd also just like to say I'm so excited about the organisation of Divine Love. Or sorry, I got it flipped around, but yeah. I can't wait to join. And I'm just waiting for the secretaries to be listed on the website because it's got just your email. Address. Yeah, we're getting there with all that. Yeah. So you know. just to be patient and yeah, yeah, and yeah. for the mediumship, you did say just to go through those five healing what, sessions. Yeah, and way. what we're trying to do too, though, is to get. Uh, as much of the material on the net as we can, but but that, at the moment I'm doing that, so that's part of the many different tasks that I'm doing at the moment, and and so it's um, and and because the material is all up where we are, it's hard really for anybody else to do it as well mm -hmm. at this point. Anybody who, the people who have the skills are dotted around the world and not w in the place where. <laughs> they can be to really give much assistance on the process. So, so a lot of it sort of then gets back to w what I'm doing and, and where I'm at in terms of uh, putting that information on the net. So you just need to be a bit patient with that. But we're trying to get... We're actually trying to also go through... We've got the reco records team is starting to do more and more recording and as a result of that, uh, getting to post things on the net and you'll notice that even... On the YouTube now, we're posting small recordings of different team meetings and stuff like that are all starting to get posted there. And uh, we're hoping to do more of that over the coming months. So yep. um, there's all these different ways um, 
that we're hoping to give more and more information to you. Yeah, and mm. the radio station project is very exciting. That's to have... Um, so you could tune in on the net to interviews with different team leaders, uh, discussions with AJ just about personal things, uh, different music and diff all kinds of keeping people up to date with what's happening. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, there's and a lot of excitement about that. we're also trying to put uh, together over the coming couple of months a series of interviews, uh, direct interviews with myself and Mary about our life and all of the other details about our lives. That ev there's all this conjecture, incorrect yeah. conjecture and, and false information about on the internet and place it uh, on the YouTube things as well. So, so in the process, there's quite a lot of things happening and, and as a result, I'm not getting to update the, the web as much as I'd like to do. But We're trying really hard to <coughs> make it as accessible to everyone as possible. Yeah, um, I know. It's yeah. just the two of you plus help. I know, I know. <laughs> Yeah. It's just I'm just I'm excited. I just yeah, wonder, yeah. It's go? good to oh, see you excited. Can I really <laughs> <tell> you? <laughs> yeah. Well, it is a lot of fun what's going on, uh, particularly up in Queensland, but also in New South Wales at the moment. Um, it, it's really there's a lot of things starting to happen in some of these locations now, where everyone's starting to really enjoy the process a lot more. And using their imagination. You know, we talked about yeah. using your imagination <laughs> in a loving way. Like, people are like, yeah, whoa, we could do that. And there's all this sort of um, bouncing off each other and generating new ideas. And it's yeah, very it's really lovely, good. actually. Yeah. 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 So even while we'll be away over the coming six to eight weeks, um, we're, we've, we've asked the teams to continue with some projects that they've got going on. And... One of these projects, we've given them some broad outlines about about having some fun days together as a whole connecting to their group of teams, and it's something that you guys could do here in the same way. Once yeah. they put together what it all is, that you could easily you can easily have a look at that and do the same thing here. But uh, it includes things like going down the beach, but building kites from scratch, and you know, learning about aerodynamics, but also flying them and testing them and. All those kind of, just basic things, just to engage some fun as well. Like there's a, a lot of people are getting a bit bogged down in the uh, in the first fear stuff. Ironically, you know, of getting rid of the addictions and everything, getting bogged down in that, and then as a result of that, you know, finding it a bit difficult. So we want to improve people's um, feelings of fun in the process of discovery mm -hmm. uh, of truth. Yeah, so that's all part of the goals. But like you say, there's only a couple. There's only two of us, and particularly when it comes to the technicals. Um, AJ's. Yeah, it's, uh, you know I'm behind the eight ball pretty much every day with <laughs> the technicals. So, you know, it gets there when I get there, sort of. Yeah, but Igor's help with has just been so great because mm. you're finding things on YouTube very rapidly now. So mm. that's good. And that helps a lot. So that also relieves a lot of pressure from me to get things done in another way. Um, so that's been really good. Oh, don't worry about it. Number six months to a year, <laughs> fine. Six months to a year. What's going to happen then, DJ? I got no idea. That's on the no idea pile. But like, I just want—if I've only got a couple of years left, I just want to have fun and just <laughs> <laughs> and just and just. Why would you only have a couple of years left? Oh, we know it changes. I'm like, I can't. You'll be in the right it. place, won't you? You'll I make some. Are you engaging your desires? Or? I'm I'm trying to, but you know it's uh, it's just art. But I like to now more walk up and down the mountains, and I thought, oh, Sherbrooke's quite pretty. <laughs> so it's just I'm just trying to just connect to some fun and yeah. passion. So that's the best I can do for now. Yeah. So. And it's a very good thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Have a have a strong, passionate desire for truth, <coughs> and connect to some fun. And when you pass, whenever that is, you'll still do exactly the same thing. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much for the last couple of days. It's our pleasure. Thanks, yeah. Andrew. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. It's been lovely. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll catch you, for some of you, we'll catch you at Albury. Yeah. For others of you, uh, we'll see you back here on the 20. First. First. Just out of interest, how many are coming to Albury? Just a show of hands. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. twelve. Awesome. There already looks like there might be 70 others, so um, so we might mm. have about 80 or so. Yeah.
So, nice. And we'll have those DVDs ready by then, won't we, Joy? So yep. that'll be great. Yeah. And then we go from Albi across to Mildura. Uh, some of us drive across to Mildura. Uh, and we'll be doing that, is it Wednesday night, isn't the it? The 18th. The 18th. That's 18th. And then yep. back here. Mm. Yep. And there may be up to 40. Um, they, st they started out by saying there's only nine of us and then it got 18 and then it got 24 and then it got whatever and, and it's slowly been increasing since so, you know, we don't really know. We've got a wonderful venue there. It's an old church yeah. that, that's available for free. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting standing up in front of a cross at my back. <laughs> No. <laughs> they were very worried that you might have a problem. Uh, I got over that one. <laughs> yeah. I said I don't think that that's really... Yeah. But it's been great getting to know you guys a bit better, hey? And, uh, and also answering some of your questions for you too. So we'll catch up with you. See you. Probably a week's time. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers.